How's it going, my beautiful Hognose people? Once again, Angry Hogs out with another video for you. Today we're going to be talking about the Swiss chocolate Hognose Morph. It was originated in Switzerland, that's why you have the Switzerland flag there, by Jules Toth. About 90-95% of these pictures are from Jules Toth, he's the originator. Uh, this gene came out right before 2020, so we're talking about 2018, around the year 2018. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I just want to take the time to give a special thanks to Kishore Shrist for uh, recommending me to make this video. He sent me a message the other day on Instagram, on YouTube, and another platform I can't remember right now. Um, basically uh, letting me know that he wanted a video. So uh, th uh, thank you Kishore. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. So if you know me, you know I can't start a video without explaining the genetic aspect. Uh, in this case, what is a Swiss chocolate? So a Swiss chocolate is a recessive gene. It basically has two chromosomes, right? The red one, let's assume it's from dad. The blue one, let's assume it's from mom. So when you combine those two uh, chromosomes, you'll see that it's a little a and a little a. Let's just pretend that's a that's an S and an S for Swiss chocolate. So when you combine those uh, genetic uh, details into a, a new offspring or a new animal, in order for it to show, it needs to be little a, little a. In our case, little sc, little sc for Swiss chocolate. When you have that combination, then you have a visual Swiss chocolate. So that's what Swiss chocolate is. It's a recessive gene. Swiss chocolate is a hypermelanistic gene, which basically means it produces a lot of melanin, uh, giving the phenotype an appearance of a black animal. On the pictures that I have up on the screen, on the top right, you have a squirrel with a black uh, coat. And then on the bottom, you have uh, a couple of adders. One's a normal phenotype, a wild type, and the other one has that hypermelanistic gene in, inside of it. So uh, it allows it to express... Uh, very dark uh, pigmentation compared to its normal, normal phenotype. Being hypermelanistic doesn't mean it takes away the pattern. It j it's just overran by dark pigmentation uh, covering the whole animal. So in the leopard there, you could see that it has its pattern, uh, but it's just overran by the, the dark pigmentation, the dark melanin. So the way melanin works in hog noses, um, they have a protein called tyrosine. And the tyrosine uses amino acids um, to be a building block. And that's essentially what produces that d uh, dark pigmentation. It's a protein. So not like humans, because there's no such thing as um, uh, hypermelanistic in, in, in humans, because we use an outside source, like, for instance, vitamin D from the sun. We use supplements. And that kind of messes with our with our melanin. When you're out in the, uh, when you're exposed in the sunlight a lot, um, then your your skin becomes darker. But that's because of the sun rays, the vitamin D. Um, so in hog nose, you don't have that. You don't have that um, because they have a, a protein. So that's why a lot of the times when a hog nose grows and develops throughout its uh, throughout its life, then it gets darker because it's a protein and it's uh, something that could be supplemented uh, through feeding through growth spurts and and that's what makes it very unique it's because uh yes they get darker but it's not because of the sunlight or because of temperature uh but it's because it's a protein it's an amino acid and it's created to to develop and build upon the dark pigmentation so here we have a side by side comparison the one on the left is a sable superconda and the one on the right is a swiss chocolate superconda and just you know take a second to observe the details on um, the differences uh, between these two snakes so the sable the one on the left is is a dark hypermelanistic we only have two in the hobby which is sable and swiss chocolate so that's why i'm doing this side by side comparison because there's only two uh the sable and the swiss uh, the sable has that dark pigmentation, but the real difference is when you look at its head, um, just the Swiss chocolate tends to be a little more darker than the sable. The head area is more glazed on a Swiss. You have that shiny appearance. That's just the, basically how the scales and how the keratin is reflecting its light. Um, so that means it has more of it. Uh, so it's more melanin than the sable, um, and that's why you see the uh, the head is kind of it's kind of shiny, 
um, because it's it's reflecting more light. So the Sable doesn't have that nearly as marked as the Swiss, but they're both really really nice snakes. And you'll notice that on the Swiss chocolate, the head stamp kind of uh, defumes or defuminizes through through the dark pigmentation. Uh, the sidewalls are a little bit yellow. Uh, they're more of a marked yellow than the sable. Uh, the sable tends to be, yeah, there, there, there is some dark. You know, it varies from each example to to every every individual. But overall, uh, the Swiss is just a little m more darker, has more melanin than than a sable. And on top of that, it also has more yellow pigmentation. Jules Toth, the originator, he actually went through the process of elimination by breeding a sable to a Swiss chocolate just to verify that it, it is not compatible. And uh, when he bred a Swiss to a sable, um, because they, at the time, only, only sable existed and not the Swiss chocolate. So uh, in order to claim that it was a new gene, then he had to discard the possibility of of it just being a variant of the gene yeah. so by doing that he he paired a visual sable to a visual uh, Swiss chocolate and if they were the same gene then all of the babies all the offspring were, were, were gonna be visual but because a sable gene sits at a different location on the chromosome than the Swiss then you are you have a double head so by breeding a sable visual to a Swiss chocolate visual, uh, you have a double head sable uh, Swiss chocolate. Um, and the picture here, you'll see that he, this is the product of him uh, breeding a, a Swiss to, to a sable. You'll have the normals, you'll have the Swiss chocolates, which are the darker ones, and then the sables are at your, your far right. So you could see the difference between normal Swisses and, 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 and the sable genes. So now let's go over the different combinations and the different morphs that can be created using the Swiss chocolate. In this picture at the very top, you have a sable. Uh, these pictures are from Joel Toss Instagram. It's called the Swiss factory. And he describes what each picture is the uh, the description for this picture is that the very top one is a sable uh the yellowish one the normal looking well it's it's a normal phenotype it's a wild type and then the one that's at the very bottom um very you know it's it's very noticeable it's it's a swiss chocolate so you have a side by side by side comparison of a sable of a normal and a swiss chocolate this was one of the very first ones that he produced. He's got that Swiss chocolate with the normal pattern. And yes, it's a normal pattern, even though the melanin uh, hides it and does a very good job in kind of uh, defuminizing the pattern. And, it, you know, it gets lost within the within the dark pigmentation. It is a normal pattern uh, Swiss chocolate. And then you see the picture of the underbelly on, of the underside of the snake. It almost looks like a lemon ghost type because the there's a lot of yellow pigmentation as well. And then in this picture, the snake on the left is Angry Hogs. It's just a beautiful Swiss chocolate conda. And uh, again, you see the pattern as the snake grows. It's only a year old. As it grows out, uh, the, the, the dark pigmentation is going to just keep growing because it's a protein. It's an amino acid. Um, so as the snake develops, the pattern is going to get more lost in between uh, the dark melanin. The one on the left, uh, you'll see it's a, it's, it's a super conda Swiss chocolate. So these are really fun morphs um, that you can start right away just by adding an incomplete dominant conda or super conda. If you're still with me in this video, I just want to say a big old thank you for, for sticking through with me. Uh, leave a comment in the section below. Let me know which one's your, your, your favorite morph. So displayed in this picture, on the outside you have a Superconda Swiss chocolate. On the inside you have an Arctic Superconda Swiss chocolate. So you can see how the Arctic lightens up the background, even though it's a dark melanin, dark uh, pigmented snake. The Arctic will still, um, because of, of its incomplete dominant gene, it will lighten up the background.
So you have on the left, you have a Swiss chocolate super arctic. And if you thought the head stamp was already glazed, well, with the super arctic, it just becomes that much more glazed. Um, the one on the right is a super arctic Swiss chocolate um, conda. So the only thing that changes is uh, the pattern. Uh, the one on the left is a normal. The one on the right is a conda. Um, so like I said, each example varies significantly because you have a lot of genes that intervene in the in the in the phenotype of the animal so essentially you're never going to have uh one animal that looks the same because there's just a lot of genes that that uh, go into an animal and here we can appreciate and see what albino and swiss chocolate will do so it'll give you like an orange snake uh the one in the middle looks a little bit more 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 brown but essentially, it's also a Swiss albino conda. Um, the one on the right, on the far right, is just the, it's 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 the sister to the the brown snake, the the Swiss conda ch uh, chocolate. Um, it's just an albino conda head Swiss. And now we have a side by side comparison to a toffee uh, toffee Swiss chocolate and just a, norm a normal toffee belly. Uh, I'm pretty sure at this point you can now distinguish which one has the the chocolate ingredient in it. Uh, in this in this particular case, the one on the outside um, has the toffee ingredient. In this picture, all of them are superconda's. The one on the left, the gray one, is an Arctic superconda, and the one in the middle is a Swiss chocolate superconda Arctic. And just for comparison wise, the one on the very far right is just a superconda Swiss. So um, the 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 objective here is you could see how the Arctic um, changes the Swiss chocolate. Uh, it lightens up the background and you could see how it doesn't allow it to get that dark. And here's a cool pattern morph. So you could see the Tiger Swiss chocolate and the Tiger Conda Swiss chocolate. So this is a very neat pattern um, that they implemented to the Swiss chocolate. This is one of everyone's personal favorites in the sable gene, but now we're looking at it in the Swiss chocolate. So exanthic and, and Swiss chocolate. Um, the one on the top is just your normal exanthic, and the one on the bottom is is basically your storm cloud, but in Swiss chocolate. It's not called storm cloud because it's not the sable gene, but it is uh, it is very similar because it acts the same way. And then you have your toffee glow, which is a toffee belly albino Swiss chocolate. It's a very orangey, caramel kind of looking snake. Uh, I really like how the pattern um, is, is outlined by an orange, and I think it just looks very cool. So this is the Toffee Glow Swiss Chocolate. And then if you're into polygenics, then you'll appreciate this one. This is a red line, extreme red, um, also known as a purple line. So it's a polygenic trait that is implemented into the Swiss Chocolate. You probably can't tell in the picture, uh, but it, it is a very red, uh, it's a very distinct uh, red from all the other Swiss chocolate. It, it almost looks like a, a mahogany color. And then one of my personal favorites, lavender Swiss chocolate. I just, uh, I think it's one of everyone's favorite, the lavender gene. And I just can't wait to implement in my project, uh, lavender Swiss chocolate. I think it's a very beautiful T positive gene, the lavender, and just allows it to have a dark uh, pigmented uh, purple hue to it, which is, which is in my opinion, one of the best Swiss chocolate morphs that you can make with the lavender gene. And this is one of the most recent pictures from Jules uh, Instagram page. Uh, it's a Swiss chocolate super arctic super conda and you could just see how it's a jet black snake. Uh, the eyes, the head, the body, it's just one slick jet black snake. Almost looks like an IMG in the bowl. I think it looks better than IMG. Uh, just how slick it is. So it, very nice. Very nice snake for sure. And lastly, if you're looking and in getting into Swiss chocolate, then I want to share with you the prices in the market range in order to do so. So you're going to be paying about 5100 for any female that's a visual uh, Swiss chocolate. For males, you're going to uh, pay upwards of eleven thousand four hundred dollars uh, and the reason behind that is because the male is able to breed to more females at a quicker timeline so you'll be able to get ahead of projects a lot sooner and uh, and and eventually and initially make your return on investment a lot quicker with the male than a female uh, a swiss chocolate condo female is going to be about seven thousand uh, four hundred 
so we're we're talking about two thousand dollar increase and in just by having the conda um added to your swiss chocolate and then your swiss chocolate conda male is going to be a double of that uh fourteen thousand two hundred so the conda gene is an incomplete dominant that'll take your project a little bit more a little bit more uh further and advanced um so and at the very bottom you'll see hit swiss chocolate pair so um you're going to be paying about 3425 and then last but not least conda hit swiss chocolate so you're going to be paying 5700 for that pair and then don't forget to add the exportation fee uh depending on who you buy it from when you buy it um, you're gonna have to pay an exportation fee, so that's uh, a significant amount on top of the price of the animal. So yes, it's a pretty hefty investment. Um, should you invest into Swiss chocolate? The answer is yes. Can you invest into Swiss chocolate? That's only a question you can answer. And it's one of the most rarest morphs out there, so uh, it's really hard right now to get your hands on. Um, I'm, I'm within driving uh, distance of, of Jules, so I'm going to be uh, picking mine up and we're going to be doing an unboxing video once we get them home and establish. So stay tuned guys. I appreciate you guys wa uh, watching another Angry Hogs video. I hope you enjoyed it and look out for more of our videos in regards to Swiss chocolate. I want to take you guys through the journey of uh, unboxing, feeding them, raising them, and hopefully one day even breeding them. So I appreciate you guys and stay tuned for, for some more Swiss chocolate videos. Have a good one, guys.